Until recently, the oldest full genome sequence was about 70,000 years old. But due to luck, some permafrost, and new sequencing techniques, researchers have sequenced the genome of a 700,000 year old horse, giving us clues into the evolution of modern horses. Taken from the foot of a horse found in the Yukon permafrost, researchers used a combination of DNA sequencing techniques to reassemble the equine DNA, sorting out bits of DNA from other microorganisms living in the sample, as well as piecing together DNA that had been damaged by age. Though not an easy task, researchers completed it, and when they were done, they compared that full genome sequence to the genome of six modern horses, a 43,000-year-old horse, and a donkey. By doing this, they could estimate the rate of mutation accumulation in the horse genome, allowing them to trace the last common ancestor of modern horses back to about four million years ago. It also allowed them to trace the history of Prezwaki's horse from Mongolia back to a split off from domesticated horses about 50,000 years ago, leaving it the last wild horse on the planet. Now much of this study was done using genome and sequence alignment, and that's exactly what it sounds like. You take the genomes from multiple organisms and you line them up so that the genes match up and you look for differences between them. Now imagine the same gene found in three different organisms. If two of the sequences of the genes look very similar with only a few differences between them, while the third looks very different with lots of differences between those first two, it's pretty good genetic evidence that those first two organisms are much more closely evolutionarily related, while the third is a little farther away on the phylogenetic tree. Now there's a way for you to get your hands on some sequence alignments. Remember when I talked about crowdsourced science many videos ago? Well, there's an online game called Philo, which lets you align some gene sequences related to diseases. Now this is super cool, it's basically Tetris for geneticists, and it's my new favorite procrastination method. In Philo, you're given some sequences aligned by a computer, and you have to squish them around, moving the base pairs until they produce the greatest match. Because while computers are awesome, humans are often still better at pattern recognition and problem solving. Your job is to optimize what the computer has done, and after you're done, you can get more information about what sequence you were looking at. Each sequence contains sections of human DNA that are thought to be linked to various genetic disorders, so the alignments you're doing are contributing to real important medical knowledge. And beyond that, the game is just darn addictive. So this week, you can align some sequences when you go forth and do science. So if you're looking for a slightly longer than bite-sized chunk of science this week, there are links to three different places in the doobly-doo below where I've talked about science on the internet recently. The first is to another Google Science Fair hangout, this one with Amy Robinson of iWire, which is another super cool online crowdsourced science game where you can map neurons. And while I was only a participant on this call, Joe Hansen of It's Okay to Be Smart was the host of the call, and so how can you go wrong with that sort of lineup? The second link is to a special hour-long Google Science Fair hangout I did behind the scenes at the California Academy of Sciences. And while it is wrong to pick a favorite hangout because it's like picking your favorite child, it was so cool. I got to talk to three of their scientists behind the scenes and they showed me their collections and they talked about genetics and they talked about echinoderms and it was so cool. I am so thankful to have gotten to talk to four different people there and it was awesome and it was so much fun and it is absolutely worth checking out. It was really, really cool. And finally, I was a guest on last week's This Is Serious Business podcast where I talked about data, dreams, and Buffy. And really, what more could you want? So you can check out links to all three of those things in the box below. But if you want to keep up to date on where I am on the internet at all times, you can always follow me on Twitter. You'll also get updates about what kind of tea I'm drinking and what baked good I've made recently. Or if you want to get only bite-sized specific updates, you can always like the bite-sized page on Facebook.